So recently the newest trailer for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie released. And honestly, although there's a lot more interesting content here, there's not really a whole lot for me to base a whole video on. However, there is one specific moment in this trailer I just had to talk about. In one short clip at the end, Spring Bonnie is seen wiping his knife's blade from the base to the end. This would normally not be all that remarkable, except that it's actually a reference. Given that Matthew Lillard is playing William Afton, or Steve Raglan as he appears to be going by in this movie, it seems very likely that this is him, or at least meant to be him, inside this suit. When has a Matthew Lillard character done this exact move before? That's right, the original Scream series where wiping blood off of his knife was one of Ghostface's signature moves to a point where it's even referenced in Dead by Daylight, which is why most of the gameplay footage you're going to see in this video is from Dead by Daylight. This knife wipe is probably the most famous piece of Ghostface's character outside of the mask itself, so seeing that particular move referenced here, in this trailer, got me really excited. And then it dawned on me. This trailer added Ghostface to a long list of horror movie characters that Springtrap has a lot in common with. And then I got to thinking more and more about Springtrap, and I came to a realization. Springtrap as a character may be the ultimate visualization of a slasher character in Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's talk about it. Here's every slasher villain that Springtrap either references, parodies, or resembles. By the way, you should totally subscribe right now. Do it, 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 do it. Let's start with the most obvious of the bunch if you ask me. Freddy. No, not that one. This one. Freddy Krueger is considered one of, if not the best, of the slasher genre's long line of villainous mascots. Debuting in 1984's A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger was immediately characterized as something different from the other slashers at the time. He wasn't some silent, hulking menace who will always be chasing you. He's kind of the opposite of that. Freddy Krueger is built like your average man, with a twisted sense of humor and a mouth that never stops spouting threats, insults, or sadistic jokes. This made him as a character inherently more human, and much more of a character than others like him at the time. What makes Freddy and Springtrap so similar though actually comes down to their backstories. Both Freddy and Springtrap are undead beings who are now cursed with this new form because of their past sin. Killing children. Freddy Krueger in most iterations is known as being a serial killer before he died, especially preying on children just like William Afton. Unfortunately though, that's kinda where the Freddy Krueger similarities stop. Unless we consider both of them kind of have this fixation on dreams, but that's mostly unconfirmed on Springtrap's end, so I won't count it. The next big one I wanted to bring up was Michael Myers, otherwise known as The Shape. I love the Halloween franchise, and Michael Myers is definitely in my top three horror movie villains, alongside some others I'll bring up later. With Michael specifically, there's nothing so direct as with Freddy, but more so in how Springtrap and Michael behave very similarly, in FNAF 3 specifically. Springtrap in this game and Michael both do something that makes them unique. They stalk and study. Whereas many other horror movie villains will simply kill you when they see you, both Springtrap and Michael will actually stare you down rather than simply rush in and kill you. Both even stand remarkably still when doing so, like statues. This is definitely not an intentional reference, but I had to get it out there before we delve into the more fun stuff. Okay, this next one is going to sound really funny but Springtrap is actually pretty similar to Jason Voorhees. Both are undead serial killers who have a habit of removing their masks at times to reveal the grisly face underneath. Both were famous for tarnishing the reputation of their stomping grounds, and both simply refused to die. I always come back, sure you do Willie, so does Jason, and he did it far before you did. Even both of them have a very similar final resting place in some sort of personal hell that recreates what they did in life. In Jason Goes to Hell, what do you know, Jason Goes to Hell. In Pizzeria Sim, Henry condemns William's soul to hell, and bingo, that seems to be where he went. Both are then forced to live out this hell in their own way. In Jason's case, he's back on Crystal Lake killing people who aren't actually real. In William's case, he's defending himself from the monsters he made in his own life. Beyond that, both are even zombies. Seriously, both are characters who at one point or another came back as a rotting corpse. Even better, a rotting corpse that looks different every time we see it. The only things that the two really lack are similar appearances and expression. Jason is a kill artist. Very few kills in the Friday the 13th series are exactly the same as another. He's punched heads off people's bodies, folded people like a beach chair, and even interrupted their sleep. What's William done? No, actually, what has he done? We never actually see Springtrap or William actively use some sort of weapon on anyone in the series. But hey, maybe the movie will change that. What about some more out there ones? I'm going to speed run my way through some horror movie characters that Springtrap and Afton remind me of. If there's one I miss, make sure you let me know in the comments. 
Pamela Voorhees. Both are parents who presumably started killing in order to worsen the reputation of whatever location they did the killing in. The deaths of their children potentially being a motivation that the two share. Pennywise the Clown. Both specifically target children using imagery most commonly associated with children's entertainment. Both lure their victims in and kidnap them. Both were active threats during the 80s specifically, and both have a specific fascination with using fear as a weapon. Patrick Bateman. Both are well-respected, if off-putting, businessmen during the day who hide a dark second life as a murderer. Because of this behavior during the day, it leads to their business partners suspecting them of murder. Presumably. I'll admit, I'm still not sure how much of American Psycho was meant to be real. Dracula. Across several interpretations of the Dracula character, he is awakened specifically when his tomb is opened or disturbed, similar to Springtrap's terror beginning when he's found in the back room of Freddy's, which had been boarded up. Dracula and Springtrap are both also characters known for having an obsession with immortality, or achieving some solution that prevents them from ever dying. Leatherface. Both Bubba and Afton have a tendency to adopt new personalities based on the costume they wear. Leatherface will oftentimes behave more effeminately or even apply makeup if he's wearing the face of a woman. And Afton is known to actually see himself as an animatronic based on the Silver Eyes novels. Xenomorph Aliens. Both are known for crawling through ventilation systems, have a visible human skull under their mask or dome, both have a smaller mouth inside of a larger one, make noises reminiscent of real world animals, and are known for having a weakness to fire. Actually, that's kind of a lot he has in common with Xenomorphs. Weird. Wait a minute. But all of that is just small coincidences. Maybe a bit of inspiration here or there, but nothing really huge. But I purposely save the absolute best for last. The horror movie icon that Springtrap emulates near perfectly, Chucky the Killer Doll. Well, I mean, aside from the height difference. Let me explain a little bit, because I know the Child's Play series, although popular, may not be the most well-known horror series in comparison with plenty of the others I've mentioned. But essentially, Chucky and Springtrap have almost the exact same origin, the same attitude post-resurrection, some plot lines are even shared between the two. So let's start with who Chucky is and why I think he parallels William Afton. Charles Lee Ray was a criminal introduced at the beginning of Child's Play, whose story is expanded on later on during the series. A very slight similarity to Afton, but I mean, come on, that's kinda typical. Anyway, Charles is a serial killer who ends up running away from police and is shot. In a last ditch attempt to save his skin as he lay dying, Charles lays his hand on a Chucky doll, a popular toy in the store he was dying in. Charles ends up reciting an incantation that allows his still living soul to transfer into the doll. The doll, now haunted by Charles, is then given as a gift to a young boy named Andy, whispering things to him, although his mother believes it to be Andy's imagination. Chucky terrorizes the family before his real plan is put into action, and throughout the series he routinely tries to capture Andy and perform the same incantation as he previously did wanting to inhabit his body. Eventually though, in the film The Seed of Chucky, which most Child's Play fans try to forget, Chucky realizes that he doesn't want to be human again. He likes the fame and more so infamy he's received for being known as Chucky the Killer Doll. From there on out, he's appeared in multiple films that don't really help us out in our comparison game but are worth watching. I'd actually really highly recommend The Curse of Chucky specifically. Anyway, a lot of what I've said definitely resembles Springtrap, but how closely? Well, we have two serial killers who decide in a last ditch attempt at survival to go inside something meant to entertain children. If we consider the Fredbear plush as being William's voice, then that's another similarity, as both take on the role of imaginary friends that are toys whispering advice and instructions to specific children. Both also seem more than happy to be inhuman, as both have shown before that they enjoy being the killers that they are after they've given up their human forms. Both also come back to life after being killed all the time, both favor kitchen knives as a weapon of choice, just roll with it. Both have had accomplices in their killings who then end up betraying them in order to repent for their own sins. Both are fathers to children who end up inheriting their violent side. Both have at least at one point been animatronics. The list goes on and on. Now, what does this all mean? Absolutely nothing. Like, this isn't a theory video or anything, this is just me explaining how Springtrap resembles so many classic horror characters. And I think deep down that's why he'll always be one of my favorite characters. Not just in the FNAF series, but in horror and even media in general. He has so much history, character, expression, all of it building him up into this absolute monster in line with some of my other favorite horror movie characters. At the end of the day, Springtrap on his own is an excellent antagonist and villain, but it's when you set him up next to the other horror villains that you realize he's well in line with the very best. However, I do feel I should talk about not Springtrap. I should talk about Scraptrap and Burntrap, as well as maybe the Mimic. This is where things get fuzzy. The reason I decided to center this video on Springtrap specifically is because Springtrap was Afton at his best, and his most present. These guys, 
These are Afton at his worst or not Afton at all. So let's talk about Scrap Trap. Scrap Trap, try as I might, doesn't really have much in common with other horror icons that I can think of. I mean, he does say, I always come back, which again attributes him to Jason and Freddy, and all that, but we see so very little of him that nothing he really does or says makes me connect him to horror in my mind like Springtrap does. Part of it is definitely because Scraptrap and all of the Pizza Sim characters behave basically the same way. I mean, once again, there's the crawling through vents thing, which connects it to the Xenomorph, but I'm actually still emotionally scarred from that connection, so we're going to ignore it. So, Scraptrap, eh, not much to say. Burn trap, though, I actually kind of do. Okay, for this we're going to make some massive assumptions, alright? First off, we are going to assume that it is Afton's corpse on this robot, and it is the Spring Bonnie suit. Next, we're going to presume that Burn trap is the Mimic, and the Mimic is only copying Afton, it's not meant to be Afton on its own. So, what does Burn trap have in common with other horror icons? Well, Burn trap is what we'd call a copycat killer, meaning a killer who inherits the identity of a previous one in an effort to capitalize off the fear of the old one having returned. Copycat killers are a very mixed bag when it comes to horror. On one end of the spectrum you have Ghostface, that's a character who is almost always a copycat killer, and it's usually very enjoyable. But then you have Roy from Friday the 13th, a character commonly cited as the reason that 5th Friday film sucks. Copycat killers are not an inherently bad idea, but it can be very tricky, especially if your previous killer is one that's already beloved by an audience. In Burn Trap's case, he's definitely starting at a disadvantage because by that point, people did really love Springtrap. However, I think Burn Trap, or the Mimic, is still interesting enough as a character to warrant the copycat status. I mean, the Mimic's whole thing is being a copycat, so it mimicking the series' previous main villain not only symbolizes the passing of the torch, but the promise of new stories with some very interesting storytelling methods. But man, what a rough passing. For the longest time, we didn't even know that this wasn't Afton. Hell, there's a huge part of the fanbase who still believes it is him, and can you really blame them? Purple eyes, yellow bunny costume, aging and burnt corpse, that fits our guy to a T. And yet, it's not him. Or at least, not him as we're used to seeing him. And Glitchtrap is even weirder. Try as I might, there's just not many horror movie characters, let alone slashers, that resemble him. Like, at all. At best, he's a representation of the Ghost in the Machine concept, and that's at best. Once you consider that he's likely not a ghost, and that he was likely always meant to be in a machine anyway, what Glitchtrap ends up being is just weird. How about Vanny? Well, Vanny actually does have some very clear slasher inspiration. She reminds me most of the Brides of Dracula, three women who serve Dracula as his vampire servants, often depicted fighting over who gets to drink their victim's blood. As one character, Vanny really does sort of fit that vampire servant archetype. She's also an example of the possessed vessel trope, a good example of this would be Gatekeeper and Keymaster from Ghostbusters, or the classic Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde given she frequently swaps between a protagonist and antagonist character. There's really a lot of comparisons that could be made for Vanny, but I don't want to show my hand too soon. Let me know if you'd want me to go more in depth on Vanny's slasher origins later on down the line. As for Willy, I think we're just about done here. Springtrap as a slasher has so much potential, and although I don't think he's gonna do that much on screen killing in the FNAF movie, I really hope that it treats him like the menace he really is. I love this character, and I'm excited to see what comes of him down the road. From Freddy Krueger to Chucky, and all the Draculas and Jasons in between, I hope you, the viewer, understands what makes Springtrap FNAF's personal best slasher. Until next time, I'm Demuted. Be sure to subscribe, and peace.